but there are surprises in store for Lisa Hume. She can blow up a brassy storm, but every time her Bavarian band have had a big booking, she's missed her chance to umpire. And for the Whitock family, whose long-lost relatives are a lot nearer than they think. For these people and more, it's surprise, surprise! Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Scylla Black. Surprise, the show that has more tricks up its sleeve than Paul Daniels. <laughs> Actually, you know, when you think about it, there are some surprising people about. I mean, take my Auntie Nellie, she's full of surprises. She went, yeah, she is. <laughs> Do you want to hear about my Auntie Nellie? Yeah. Right, I tell you, my Auntie Nellie went to the supermarket the other day and they had this special offer on. Two tins of peaches for the price of one. And she said to the girl, is that right? And the girl said, yes, you buy one tin and the other tin's free. Auntie Nelly said, I only need one tin. I'll take the free one. God, <laughs> 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 it wasn't that funny. <laughs> but not, enough about my Auntie Nelly. Let's get on with the show. Oh, and I say, oh, look at this, I'm being chased by a camera. No, 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 that's close enough at my age. Please, please, get back, you fools. I think I'd better explain. I think I will explain, in case you think one of our cameramen has gone peculiar. Actually, we've got a very special person operating this camera. Now, those who watched ITV last night will know all about Stephen, and those who didn't, well, it's your own fault. You see, when we started work on the new series of Surprise, Surprise, we heard our young Stephen wanted to be a cameraman. And this is what we did about it. Hello, here I am preparing for our brand new series of Surprise, Surprise. And sitting opposite me is our faithful backroom boy, Graham Sisson. Now, Graham, you are one of our editors, aren't you, love? Yeah. Yes, and as you know, Graham, we get hundreds and thousands of letters to the Surprise, Surprise office. But Surprise, Surprise, you got one, didn't you? I did. Who is it from? It's from Stephen Eaker, and he's 14, and he wants to be a cameraman when he grows up. Really? Well, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, say no more. I shall ring Stephen right now at this very moment and invite him on the show. Now, he lives in Edgeware, I believe, Graham, yes? Yes. That's seven digits. Hmm? You excited, Graham? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what he'll say. Hello, Mum. To me? That'll be news to Bobby. It's ringing out. Hello? 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 Hello, could I speak to Stephen Eaker, please? Yes, it's me. Hello, Stephen. Surprise, surprise, it's Scylla here. Oh, hello. <laughs> Hi, Stephen. Hello. I'm, I'm a bit surprised, actually. My mum is actually holding cards up at me at the moment. And what, what, what did they say? What did the cards say? You are being recorded on TV now. It's really silly. Act amazed. Keep talking. <laughs> well, are you acting amazed? Yes. Well, you're actually going Mom's out on... Eh? Mum's been saying don't use the phone all night, and I've been... Oh, my God. OK. <laughs> well, a little birdie tell me that you wrote a letter not to me. I'm very upset about that, Stephen. You never wrote to me, but you wrote to our editor, Graham Sisson. Is that right? Um, yes. Yes. Well, I've got a copy of that letter right in front of me, and it says that you are a very big fan of television. Oh, not... yeah, I love it. Yes, and you want to be a cameraman. Yeah. Well, surprise, surprise. We want you to be a cameraman, too. Oh. Are you, are you prepared to come to the studio and work one of our cameras? Yes. Oh, I'd love it. How long have you been interested in cameras and things? Since I was... The first time it was since I was about nine. Nine? Because I went... I was amazed with Tiswolf. Do you remember that? 
You, oh, tis was. Yeah. Yes, I do. I was but a mere child myself at the time. <laughs> yeah. Well, you get your chance to be in front and behind the camera this time, Stephen, all right? Thank you, Doug. So are you, are you free for the first of the, sh of the series, first show of the series? I, I hope so. When is it? Tomorrow night. Oh, yes. Yeah. Goes out at 7.15. Live. You, well, I hope so. I hope you're going to be live. You're you're going to be live. Right. Okay. Now you're going to bring your mother along with you. Mummy, you're going to come along. Yes, yeah, great. Oh, yeah. I was asking. Yeah. <laughs> so I shall see you tomorrow in the flesh, then, Stephen. All right. I can't wait. And this is all thanks to our Graham over here, our oh. editor. See you Love tomorrow, it. then. Okay. All right, love. Okay. Bye. Ta-ra, then. Ta-ra. Bye. Ta -ra. And this is it, lad. The big night mm. has arrived. Yeah. You're not worried, are you? No. No, you no. see, very confident already because you know. No. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, Stephen, we need all the help we can get. What with this motley crew here. Oh, oh never mind. <laughs> no, 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 they're not that bad. Only because you've been working with them all day. Well, you sit back and relax and enjoy it. All right. Because I'm going to enjoy it too. But don't some people have funny ambitions? They do. Take the other day, the lady that our Bob met. Hello. I'm standing in the principal's office at the Peter Simmons Sixth Form College in Winchester. One of the secretaries here, known in Northover, has just been summoned into the office next door here. And I'm going to burst through the door and surprise her. That could be her now. No, no. No, no, Northover. Hello, how Hello. are you? Morning surprise, Good surprise, no, no. Oh, no. Oh, yes. What? Your daughter, actually, Fiona, wrote and told us that you've oh, got this no. very unusual ambition. Oh, no. What's, it, what's that oh, ambition, no, no? I bet it's something to do with pigs, I was yes. just say. About you, it always, your ambition's always been to, to wash a pig. Yes. <laughs> well, we found you a pig, no, no. We've got a big old lined up on a little farmyard, and it's lovely. It's oh, a lovely gorgeous. And we're going I to go off really and, enjoy that. We're going to go off and wash it. Oh, how lovely. Is that all right? Oh. We've got to get you changed, and we've got, we're going to the farm. So uh, we're at the farmyard. We need more animals. We need a horse. So get on your horse. No, no. Get, climb on your horse. <laughs> oh, that's that one. That's it. And we'll gallop off to the farmyard. Come on, Nona. <laughs> <laughs> Better move on, Nona. Once we've washed this pig, we've got to get it to market for the pig judging competition. Well, I'm going in the right direction. How about you? Well, I haven't got a steering wheel, have I? <laughs> Come on, Bossy. Bossy, oh, here we go. Oh, Bossy. Come okay. on. Nice group here, look. Oh, she's gorgeous, Come on, have a nice bath. Look, all your bath stuff's oh, over she's here. Oh, dirty, Bob. Well, look they're, they, I mean, they're a very clean oh. animal, but she has got a little bit dirty. <laughs> Come on, Mossy. Mossy, 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 What did you have for breakfast this morning, Nona? Well, certainly not pork chops, Bob. I don't be bacon pudding. Oh, dreadful. Don't tell me things like that. With a sausage. Bossy, <laughs> <laughs> we'll hear you. I've had enough of this, Nona. Just try the pig off with that sawdust and we'll take it off to the show, because time is flying by. Come on, Mossy. Come on, Mossy. Off to the show. Come on. <laughs> the show awaits. Oh, doesn't she look gorgeous? She looks nice. It's a shame about us. Oh, well, it's a shame about you, Bob. Mossy, this is for sake. Shall we put a ribbon on as she goes? OK. Come on. This way, Mossy. Come on, Mossy. Oh, I'm so nervous. I hope she wins after all our effort. Oh, she's bound to, Bob. She's the best here, look. Well, it's down to the judge now, oh. isn't it? There's another one! Oh, oh, We've won! We've won! Mossy's won! Everybody! No, no! She's won the best pig! It's oh, brilliant, brilliant! There's your, there's your winning rose. Oh, oh fabulous! Good.
Go on, I'll buy you a ham sandwich. <laughs> well, then, this lovely fella sitting right next to me is Eric Butler, and Eric is the president of the Teddy Bear Society. Actually, I didn't know Teddy Bears had a president. But, you know, you do a lot of work for charity, don't you, Eric? I do, yes. Yes, and I believe you've raised lots of money. Over yeah. 20,000 pounds, is that yeah. right? Actually, it's super. Well, we thought Eric and his teddy bears deserved a special syllogram for all the good work they're doing. So the other day, I went to surprise our Eric while they were having a teddy bear weekend. Oh, no, it can't be through there. <laughs> I'll go through it. That's right, yes. Oh, it's getting interesting. It's getting in... Eric! Eric, little Eric Butler. Hang on, I'm looking for a special person. Eric, little Eric Butler. Little Eric Butler, are you there? Eric, little Eric Butler. Oh, there he is. There he is. Have you? Oh, you're a fool. Oh, Eric. Oh, oh. Eric, surprise, surprise, <laughs> yes. Oh, he's got to sit down. I'll sit down. Oh, Eric. How are you? I'm fine, I'm fine. Tell us why, why are you all here? Tell us. I know why you're here, but you tell me. <laughs> well, we're having a Teddy Bear Fundraiser Society reunion. Yes, and you've been raising lots and lots, in fact, a lot, a lot of money for charity. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Tell us how you raise money for charity. Well... I'll take a pound off you now, Stella. But I've got my teddies on. Oh, no. <laughs> you've got some lovely daughters. You've got four lovely daughters. I have, yeah. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you do an awful lot of work for charity, and that's why your daughters have written oh, to me. Lovely. They've sent me all the way up here to Bridlington. Yes, they marvelous. have. That and, is marvellous. Uh, Marvelous. I'm up here to do a syllogram for you, all right? Oh. <laughs> oh, I want to ask you one question now. Yes, my love. Will you let me be your teddy bear? Yeah, of course I will. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are we waiting for, Chuck? Right. Let's go. Away. Oh, uh, see you in a moment. Teddy bear. Oh, let me be. Your teddy bear. I just want to be your teddy bear. Did you enjoy that, Eric? Oh, that was brilliant. That was brilliant. And we had a super day, didn't we? We had a marvellous day, marvellous yes. day. 
And you're really into all this Teddy Bear Society stuff, aren't you? I mean, I see you're wearing your special Teddy Bear sweatshirt. Uh, that's from a special little girl. Yes. Yeah, so, anyway, that's who you're talking about. It's Elizabeth, Elizabeth in yes. Ontario and yes. in, in uh, Canada. Canada yeah. Yes. Sure. Actually, you have kept in touch with her, though, haven't you? Oh, yes. Very she much has so. been very, very ill, but she is wonderfully she's well now. Brilliant. Yes. yes. And, uh, Many a times you've spoken to her. Oh, yes. Yes. And, in fact, you're saving up to go and see her, aren't you? Oh, hopefully, yes. I'm getting my pennies together. Well, you can keep your pennies. Your Elizabeth is right here. She's not in yes, Canada. Exactly. Come in, Elizabeth. Say hello to your Uncle Eric. Oh, no. Oh, look at you. Oh, 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 this is good. <laughs> oh. Have a seat. Oh, look. <laughs> Have a seat. Oh, is that made you happy now, Eric? Oh, this is lovely to see her. She's so well. She's just celebrated her 21st birthday. Isn't that lovely? She's brought you your very own Mountie teddy yes. bear. <laughs> <laughs> and while you get to know your Elizabeth again, because you haven't seen her for a couple of years now. Five years now, no. Five, no, two years. Two, two years. years. Two well, years. we're going to take a break, but please don't go away, because we'll be back with lots more surprises. Oh, just... And Gordon Burns will be here with the search line. So see you in a couple of minutes. My surprise, eh? Thank you. Hello and welcome back. Well, now it's time. I think I made a phone call. But first of all, I need a phone. Where's the fin? <laughs> oh, ah. <laughs> it's my little teddy phone. What? Oh, thanks a lot, Stephen. Oh, yeah. yes, two phone numbers now. Hey, you're coming up in the world, Stephen. He's now a studio manager. Yeah. Been promoted, Chuck. <laughs> See you later. Sir <laughs> <laughs> in his part up as well. <laughs> oh, and isn't he gorgeous, ladies and gentlemen? Isn't he lovely? Yes. <laughs> oh, we better not let the Teddy Bear Society see him. They'll want to take him back with them, won't they? Yes. But he's all mine, and I'll tell you why. Because at this very moment, somewhere near Peterborough, Den Watts. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, it's not dirty Den, but it's a desperate Den. <laughs> yes, Desperate Den is sitting completely on the word that I'm about to ring him. Now, we all know about Desperate Den because two of his daughters wrote and told us about him. And he's got this impossible dream, you see. So, why don't I ring him and find out what it is? And I've got the phone number here. And you're going to sit on my lappy poos. <laughs> yes, and I am going to tickle your tummy. <laughs> yes, because that's where I'm going to dial the number. Oh, I've lost the number. And it's nine digits. Aren't you a lucky bird? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Nine digits up there in Peterborough. Yes. It's going to burp in a minute, I think. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, sweetheart. Oh. Sorry about that. Hello? Hello. Hello, could I speak to Den Watts, please? Yes, you're speaking to him. Am I indeed? Surprise, surprise, Den, it's still here. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, it is. <laughs> oh, no, it can't be. <laughs> oh, yes, it is. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, you're joking. <laughs> Den, you're actually on the telly now. Am I really? Oh, yes. Well, your voices. Now, I've had a letter telling me all about you from your, two of your daughters, actually. Now, you've got this impossible dream, this burning ambition to be Superman. That's right. <laughs> is that right, Chuck? It's all coming out now, isn't it? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> and I believe you actually dress up, don't you? Uh, I have done for the occasional party, yes. <laughs> Well, what 
so fascinating about Superman? I mean, what about Batman and Robin? Don't they do anything for you? Oh, no, they don't do anything for me at all, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be Superman or nothing. It's got to be Superman. I must admit, though, I'm not crazy about Batman. No, I'm not crazy about the Cape Crusader, no, no. Mind you, Robin seems like a nice boy. <laughs> I tell you what, Dem, we have actually got a photo of you here in the studio. Have a look at this, everybody. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes, Dan, I'm, I've just shown the studio audience here and everybody else. How embarrassing. What? <laughs> and I must confess, you look more like Cooperman than Superman. <laughs> you, you, uh, hey, what are you saying, Chuck? I say flatterer. <laughs> <laughs> you said learn more of you. I tell you what, though, because your wife and your two daughters have said to me, you know, that you, your really unfilled ambition is to fly. Is yes. that right? Yes. <laughs> yes well, we right. are going to fulfill that ambition, Dan. You are. Yes, indeed we are. <laughs> By the way, what do you want to change, in a phone box or a dressing room? Oh, I'm not fussy. I'm not fussy. You're not fussy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are going to fill, fulfill your ambition. We want you to come on the show next week. Are you free? Yes, yes, I am. <laughs> oh, and you're going to have a marvellous time, Dan. Oh, you I'm... are going to fly the whole length of the studio. <laughs> I should have forward to that. <laughs> We're going to shoot you from a cannon. <laughs> <laughs> no, I lie. All right, Dan. Well, I look forward to seeing you in the studio next week. Please bring your wife, and if your daughters want to come, they're very welcome too. Okay. Um, and will you bring your cosy as well? Yes, yes. <laughs> I'll see you next week then. Okay then. Ta-ra, Chuck. Bye. Ta-ra. Oh, I shall look forward to that. <laughs> well, here's the moment you've all been waiting for. Yes, all you Burns fans out there. No, not Robbie. It's our own Gordon Burns. With the search line. Oh, Gordon, look at that. Yes, you've got your little doggy there. And I've got my very own Teddy. Yes, this this is called Bliss, not my own. Say hello to your Auntie Scylla. Go on, hello. Hello, Bliss. <laughs> <laughs> he or a she? She, yes. She my or little, Bliss. My little bitch here. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Say, Gordon, you have come up in the world, though, haven't you? Yes, it all looks very special. I'm glad that at last my true talent has been recognised. Yes, well, it was me that recognised your talent in the first place, wasn't it, everyone? Yes. yes! Yes! And we're dying to hear what's on the search line, aren't we? Yes! What have we got on the search line? Then you shall, because we may have been off the air for nine months, but still, your letters have come pouring in, literally by the sackful. And I just hope we can be as successful this year as we were last. And with your help, I'm sure we can be. Now, do you remember last series, Mavis Danks sent us this splendid picture, hoping to contact the members of her wartime timber corps. Incredibly, nearly all her gang got in touch. So Mavis duly organized a reunion. And here they all are. And as you can see, they haven't changed that much since their lumbering days. On the other hand, Searchline has changed a bit since last year. For this new series, we're introducing an additional Searchline service, an opportunity for some of you to make your own personal appeals. And we're going to kick off in this program with Richard Horsley from Hartlepool, Cleveland. I'm trying to find my brother. He was born in Hartlepool on the 8th of August, 1959, and then given the name John Swindles. I was born five years later, and we were both adopted at birth, so I've never seen him. So if you are watching, or anybody with any information about John Swindles, please call Searchline, because I'd really like to meet you. My name is Gillian Green, and I come from Bognor Regis. I'm looking for my mother, Betty Wright or White. I was born in Edinburgh in 1944, and my name then was Calderhead. My mother subsequently remarried, and her name was Mrs. Thomas. She, I do know that she went into the ATS when she, in approximately the mid-50s. 
and I haven't seen her since I was 11 or 12 years old. I would very much like her to phone Searchline tonight if she is watching this programme. I desperately want to find her and talk to her and catch up on the years that we haven't seen each other. I would also like her to know that she is a grandma and a great grandma and I would dearly love her to see them. There is one other thing. Betty, do you remember this song? Over the hills and a long way off, the wind will blow my top knot off. Please phone. Now, what's this little lass doing here? I'm sure you're all wondering. Well, she's a Bedlington Terrier, and it was one just like her that won this medal. It is inscribed to J and H Kennedy for their dog, Gold Seeker, and was presented at a pedigree dog show in Birmingham. Now, does this dog here jog your memory? Did you or any of your ancestors breed champion Bedlington Terriers? Now, it is a long shot because Gold Seeker was born in 1894, which means, by a quick bit of mental arithmetic, that she could have been this one's great, 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 grandparent. On the other hand, I could be wrong. <laughs> now, this medal was found by Joan Clifford whilst on holiday in Scotland, and she would love to return it to the descendants of the Victorian dog-breeding Kennedys. Well, now, the power of surprise, surprise, we get letters not just from the United Kingdom, but from all over Europe. And here's one now from Michael Osland of West Germany. He's been trying to trace his pal David Newby. David and Michael served together in the Q Sanus Post Battery, Royal Artillery, 5th Heavy Regiment in Hildesheim, West Germany. David returned to England in 1981, and Michael thinks he could now be somewhere in Yorkshire. So, David Newby, if you're watching, Michael Osland is waiting to hear from you. Hardly oversees this one, but it is still over water. In fact, the Firth of Forth. In 1961, Alex Waters was working on the construction of the Forth Road Bridge with Johnny Fortune and William Pride. Now here are Alex and Johnny perched precariously on the bridge. While they were working one evening, a cable snapped and hurled Johnny 150 feet into the river below. Without hesitation, both Alex and Willie bravely jumped into the rescue. They tried to rescue their pal, but they were swept away in the strong current. Happily, though, all three were eventually hauled to safety further downstream. Alex was hailed as a hero, but hasn't seen either Johnny or Willie since the accident. So, Johnny Fortune and Willie Pride, please, let's hear from you. Now, we've got a new number for this series, and this is what you should ring, 01-222-8000. The lines will be open until 10 o'clock tonight, but I'll be back later in this show with some more search line. In the meantime, I'm going to teach young Bliss here to spit. It could be the start of a whole new career. <laughs> and hand you all back to Scylla. Thanks a lot, Gordon. We shall see you later. Okay. Well, now, have you noticed that a new art form has sprung up? It's called spray can art. We had a letter from a Mrs. Christine Wareham, and she told us that her 17-year-old son, Jason, was crackers about spray can art. The problem is, it's illegal to go around spraying walls and buildings, so... Poor old Jason has had to do his spraying on bits of old paper. He did have a go on the back of his garden shed, but he wants something really, really big to go mad at. Well, with the help and cooperation of Portsmouth City Council, we found that dirty big thing. Hello. I'm standing outside the Tricorn Shopping Centre in the centre of Portsmouth, waiting for Jason and his mum, Christine, to come out of that little alleyway over the road there. Actually, Jason thinks he's going on a shopping trip with his family. Well, he's not. Here is the lovely wall that the council have given us permission to use for Jason's artistic efforts. Oh, and I believe they're on the way. Come on. Here they are. Morning. How are you? Jason, isn't it? Jason Wareham. Yeah. How are you? I'm fine. You're right, Christine. Your mum, Christine, has uh, told me that you're very keen on spray can art. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, surprise, surprise. Today's your day. Because the big problem is, Jason, that with this spray can art graffiti to you, that uh, it's very difficult to find a suitable place to do it, like a wall and that, isn't it? Yeah. Because basically, it's illegal, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you see, with special permission, we found a wall for you. Oh, you have? A very big one, and it's over there. Come and have a look. Come on, Christy. 
Well, Jason, here you are. This is your wall. Is it big enough for you? Yeah, that's great. Fuck it. It's not a bad one, is it? But you're not on your own with this. We've got somebody to help you. He's actually known in the spray can world as the Artful Dodger. And here right. he is. He's a, got a jacket for you to wear because we don't need to get this, uh, your very nice leather messed up. Your work's been featured on, on many television programs and commercials, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. And you're the, you're the top man in Britain. Well, I'm not arguing. We've got you the best. So I think the best thing I can do is uh, let you two bomb the flat with a death burner wild style. And uh, let's hope there's no buffers about. And uh, so do the hit and be king. Don't ask me what it means. <laughs> man. Countdown! Countdown! Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Well, Artful Dodger, he's a graffiti pro. And Jason, he's worm one and Artful's his hero. Together they're steady and ready to go. So let's go. So let's go. Come on, let the graffiti flow. Artful and worm one together, they're on the show. A oh, what a combination. They're a great connection. Cause they were firm. In other words, beat any competition. So they should. Why not? Rule a neighborhood. Because they're dead. In other words, really good. Somebody pop us from off of the street And they move, crew, world And twirl to the beat They spin on their heads They hand them back on their feet huh, huh. Well, everything is okay, but now I'm sorry to say Here comes Bobbers do the poodle And he don't play <laughs> Now he's bothered and bothered and he's on his back He's trying hard, but, but he ain't got the knack Full and worm one, they're doing fine with style. They're fine. Say they gotta keep on going to the lyrical rhyme. Huh, huh, huh. Huh, huh. Oh no, here's Bob. Do the poodle. He's back. This time with graffiti. Oh, what a chap. <laughs> He's trying to <laughs> the place cause it's going everywhere even on his face he's still trying on but he ain't got the knife and as for his graffiti it's really worth it <laughs> all for the world what are there the happening things together they make up the graffiti kings young artists sitting out there in our audience oh Jason that was absolutely marvelous Chuck are you pleased yeah oh that's good I've got one more little surprise for you yes you know you know Portsmouth City Council they were so pleased with your work they've given you your very own tunnel to paint how about that right <laughs> yes down in the city center where all the new buildings going on so we hope to see your new work all right love yeah thanks well done going to take a break now but please don't go away because we'll be back in a couple of minutes with a musical surprise 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 <laughs> Q Silla. Yes, Q me indeed, little Steven down there. There's a lad who's going places, you know. He's a director now. Whatever next? Well, I know what we've got next. If I was to say to you those three little words, Bing House Shunklers, you'd all think I'd gone mad, wouldn't you? <laughs> all of you except Lisa Hume from Market Harper up there in Leicestershire. She's a shunkler, and at the moment, She's a gobsmack shunkler. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Come on, Lisa. Come down and all will be revealed. Come on, Lisa. What do you mean, oh my God? He won't help you now, Lisa. No, he won't. No, he won't. Surprise, surprise. Now, you belong to the Bing House Shunkler Band, don't you? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Now, there's six lads in that band, 
and you're the only girl. Yeah. Yes. And it's an <laughs> oompa pa band, isn't it? Um pa pa. Yeah. I thought that's what I said, Chuck. No, um -pa. <laughs> what did I say? Um oompa. Um -pa. Um -pa. Um -pa. Um -pa. Um -pa. I'm sorry, um -pa. sorry. An um pa pa band. Yeah. And you um pa pa all over the place, don't you? Yeah. Mainly for charity. Yeah. Well, we all think you do a great job, actually. <laughs> and surprise, surprise. All those fellas are here tonight, all six of them, and here they are, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, the Bing House Shunklers. Come on, lads. <laughs> they do look funny, don't they, Lisa? Yeah, but not as good with that. But. No, they're not as good without you. Now, you're at the show tonight because you, you think that your boyfriend has won tickets in a raffle. That's what he told me, yeah. yeah. <laughs> not true. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> you're going to play with the lads tonight in the band. <laughs> what instrument do you play? Cornet. Cornet. Well, it just so happens I've got one here. <laughs> and here it is. Oh, gosh. Isn't that nice? Isn't that lovely? So, if you'd like to shunkle over there <laughs> with the rest of the shunklers, I'll give you a build up. All right, Lisa? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time on television, we present Lisa Hume and the Bing House Shunklers Band. enjoyed that. Well, you know, they say you can't have too much of a good thing, so here's Al Gordon again to tell us who's looking for who. And we go straight into Searchline Part 2 with one of our new series of personal appeals. Hello, my name's Jane Stoves from Hartburn in Stockton, and 15 years ago I found a silver serviette ring with the initials PH on the front. It has an inscription inside which reads from his godparents, Aunt Beryl and Uncle Charles, February the 11th, 1945. I've always wondered who it belongs to, so if it's yours, and you, or you know whose who's it is, please contact Searchline. The picture is myself 36 years ago when I lived in Spital an der Trau and was brought up by my grandparents. I was then known as Gerdy Sinitschnik and I lived outside a house, outside the football pitch where the British soldiers used to play football. And I am looking especially for two people. I would love to find the girl who lived opposite the little grocery shop in Spital called Eckes. Her house was straight across and we used to play together every day. She couldn't speak English. I mean, I couldn't speak English. She couldn't speak German. But we, she was my best friend. We held hands, we played together. Eventually, her parents was moved and we lost contact. The other person which I'm looking for, 
was that soldier which used to wait for me when I fetched the milk for my grandparents. And he used to wait outside the Molkerei, which is a very tiny little milk shop in Spital, and used to give me a bar of chocolate. Chocolate in those days was something of a luxury. The guy used to pick me up and cry, so I felt somehow he had a little girl in England. I would love to contact or find those people, and if you could, please ring Searchline tonight. And I'll give you the number to ring in just a few moments. Well, the dog's gone off to find a tree, and <laughs> died from the trees this animal, but fortunately only on a picture. This tailless monkey was adopted as a Royal Army Service Corps mascot at the end of the war after waking up George Singleton one night by tapping on his bedroom window. That was in Hong Kong, where George was stationed with the 426 supply company RASC. Now, George isn't particularly keen on seeing the monkey again, but he would like to hear from any of these lads who served with him. Now, if you recognize yourself in this picture, or remember feeding the monkey bananas, please call the search line. Now, when Italian Giuseppe Carrieri visited this country last year, one show that really caught his eye was Surprise, Surprise, and that prompted him to write to us. Giuseppe was serving in the Italian Navy in 1943 when he met and became close friends with Albert Owen, who was a sergeant in the Royal Artillery stationed at Taranto. Even when Albert's unit moved on, Giuseppe still managed to keep in touch with him. But eventually, due to the fortunes of war, they did lose contact. So, Albert Owen, do you remember this picture being taken in Taranto, Italy in 1943? Giuseppe dearly hoped so, and he would love to hear from you. Now, who recognizes these? <laughs> well, well, if you do recognize these, or garments uh, like these, made in their thousands over 50 years ago, Anne Bolton, or Anne Skeeth as she used to be known, hopes that Doreen Hewitt Hearn does. Anne and Doreen used to work together as underwear machinists in Chertsey, Surrey in 1937, when these were the height of respectability, if not fashion. Doreen Hewitt Hearn, do these bring back memories? <laughs> if so, please give us a ring tonight. And finally, to bring our first search line of the new series to a close, some quickies. This week, we are looking for land army girls based at Caer Hostel, Powys, Wales, between 1943 and 1950. Ellen Steen Cherry, last seen 1942 at Victoria Station. Francesco Pani, originally from Calgary, Sardinia, now possibly in Las Vegas, but we know there are lots of relations in this country. Maybe they'll get in touch with us. And Joseph Paul Conway, born June the 20th, 1966, last seen in Birmingham seven years ago. If any of you are watching, please give us a call on 01 222 8000. Our researchers will be answering the phone until 10 o'clock tonight. Or you can always write to us at Searchline. Surprise, surprise, London Weekend Television, SE 99 6YW. That's it for this week. See you next week. Back now to Scylla. Thanks a lot, Gordon. Well, now, I wonder where our young Stephen's got to. It. From cameraman to managing director, no less. He'll be making a bid for what's the next. <laughs> you know, one of the nicest things about this show is that you get to meet some really nice people. And two very, very nice people are sitting here in our audience tonight. Yes, it's you, Lisa Wittick, and your father, and your mum, Pat. Where are you? Where are you, Lisa Wittick? Lisa, would you like to bring your mum and dad down and join us, please? Oh. Have a seat down there. Hello, sweetheart. How are you? Nice to see you sit next to your lovely wife. Well, Pat, I know all about you. I know you're looking at Lisa over there. Well, Lisa wrote and told me all about you. 
with the approval of her dad over here. She wrote and told me all about you, like, like well, over 15 years ago, your first husband emigrated to Australia, taking your two sons with them, is that right? Yes. And you lost contact with them, didn't you, sweetheart? <laughs> that was until last September last year. Yes, 11th. When you, the 11th, you remember the day? Quarter past nine on Friday morning. Quarter past nine on Friday morning. That was when your Carl phoned you up, didn't he? Yes. Yes. Now, your Carl's married now, isn't he? Yes, and I've got three grandchildren. Three grandchildren. And also, Christopher lives uh, close by. Yes. And you've been in contact. A few times. Oh, quite a lot. He's found me since. And you've, it's cost you a fortune in telephone calls. Well, not me, but Carl. And Carl as well. They don't have to spend any more money because they're all here tonight. Say hello to your two sons after 15 years. Come in, Carl, with your wife, Dee, and the three grandchildren and Christopher. Come in, gang. Here they all are. So will Gordon Burns. So until then, I'll see you next week. Ta-ra then! <laughs> <laughs>